These were, the reason I called it 24 karat gold is because they're like, the, these are the golden songs. Some of them didn't, some of them were recorded by Fleetwood Mac and I wasn't crazy about the arrangement, so I pulled them. Stevie Nicks is a British American singer and songwriter, best known for her work with the rock band Fleetwood Mac. After joining the band in 1975, she transformed the band's fortunes for the better. She made history with her second album, Rumors, which won the Grammy Award for Album of the Year and was later certified Two Diamond by the Recording Industry Association of America. Her debut solo album, Belladonna, climbed at number one on the U.S. Billboard chart and was certified platinum. Nick's second album, The Wild Heart, was also certified platinum, establishing her as a solo artist. She had a lot of music business acquaintances, so she invited them to play on her CDs. Like its predecessors, her second album, Rock A Little, was a major smash and gained platinum certification. The stress of working so hard, however, took its toll on her mental and physical health, and she developed a heroin addiction. The gifted vocalist worked hard to overcome her substance usage and was ultimately able to move on from this difficult period in her life. She was a successful artist who is credited with more than 40 top 50 singles and more than 140 million record sales. One of Nick's hit singles in the album called Rhiannon was ranked among the top 500 greatest songs of all time by Rolling Stone. Landslide was also another hit single that performed well in the groundbreaking album. She's a great cook anyway before she even went home. So um, she just said, she just called and said, what would you think if I decided to come back to the band? And I, and I said, Chris, it's your band. If you enjoy these videos, please remember to hit the like button as it does help us out a lot. And comment below who your favorite celebrity is that you'd love to see in an upcoming video. Her full name is Stephanie Lynn Nix, but is also known as Nix. She was born May 26, 1948 in Arizona, United States, making her 73 at the time of this production. She stands at 156 centimeters or 5 feet 1 inches tall. Nix had a miscarriage in 1979 when Fleetwood Mac was at the top of their game and she was dating Eagles singer Don Henley. What did it mean to have the freedom to choose? I'm very sure Fleetwood Mac would not exist if I hadn't had that abortion. There's no way I could have had a kid back then, working as hard as we did all the time, and there were a lot of drugs and I was abusing them. I would have had no choice but to leave. She takes a breather. And I knew the music we were about to offer to the world would heal so many people's hearts and offer so much joy to so many people. And then it occurred to me, you know what? That is quite significant. There is no other band on the planet with two lead female singers and two lead female songwriters that was the purpose of my entire world. Stevie Nicks has been taking the virus more seriously than the majority of people. This year, she has scarcely left her Los Angeles home. God bless my helper. She puts on her hazmat gear and goes grocery shopping because otherwise we'd starve to death, she claims. She became extremely unwell in March 2019 and ended up in critical care with double pneumonia. She now believes that contracting COVID-19 may put an end to her singing career. When my mother underwent open heart surgery, she was on a ventilator for three weeks and remained hoarse for the rest of her life. What would it mean to her if she couldn't sing anymore? She responds, it would kill me. It isn't simply that I would never sing again, it's that I would never dance on the world stages again. She takes a breath and sighs. At 72 years old, I'm not willing to give up my job. When we chat on the phone in LA, it's nearly midnight. This isn't an issue for Nix, who is completely nocturnal. She had just become the first woman to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame twice on the night she died last year, an honor that reflects her wild success as one of Fleetwood Mac's lead singers and as a solo artist, writing and singing raw, magical songs about love and freedom like Dreams, Rhiannon, Gold Dust Woman, Landslide, and Edge of Seventeen. Nix married Kim Anderson, the widower of her friend Robin Anderson, in her only marriage. They married in 1983, shortly after Robin Anderson's death from leukemia and during the peak of the Belladonna album's popularity. I was determined to care for the kid, so I told Kim, I don't know, I think we should just get married, she says. We didn't get married because we were in love, we got married because we were mourning and it was the only way that we could feel like we were doing anything. Nick says of her and Anderson's three-month marriage. 
Years after their divorce, she reconnected with her stepson when he was a teenager, paying for his college education, and she's been in touch with him ever since. Nix was romantically related to Lindsey Buckingham since 1966, Mick Fleetwood temporarily in 1977, Eagles drummer slash vocalist Don Henley in the late 1970s, and Eagles composer J.D. Souther briefly in the late 1980s. After becoming pregnant by Henley in 1979, Nix got an abortion. She had relationships with Jimmy Iovine, who produced Belladonna from 1980 to 1981, and Joe Walsh, guitarist for the Eagles and the James Gang from 1983 to 1986, whom she referred to in 2007 as one of her greatest loves but the two were unable to maintain their relationship due to mutual drug abuse. Yeah. Some of them were recorded by me, and I wasn't crazy about the producer's direction, and I pulled them. Um, some of them were, you know, sometimes you have too many mid-tempo songs. Stephanie Lynn Nix, better known as Stevie Nix, was born on May 26, 1948. Her hometown was Phoenix, Arizona, where she was born. Jess Nix and Barbara Nix were her parents, Jess, her father, used to be the president of Greyhound's Armor Dial, a meatpacking company. Her mother, on the other hand, was a stay-at-home mom. Nick's vocal ability was refined with the guidance of her grandpa, Aaron Jess Nix, a country music performer. Her granddad began assisting her in singing duties when she was four years old. They split up with the band in 1972 after performing with them for a while. Despite this, the two lovebirds went on to achieve varying levels of success in their music careers. The pair eventually signed a recording contract with Polydor Records. Buckingham Nicks, 1973, their debut duet record was released shortly after. Unfortunately, the debut album failed to chart, influencing Polydor Records' decision to dismiss them. Things took a new turn after that as Nicks was forced to take an odd occupation to help maintain the family. Following that, the duo reunited in 1975 when they teamed up with Mick Fleetwood. They released their debut album, Fleetwood Mac, the same year. This was a huge hit for them, and it helped them gain worldwide renown. Rolling Stone named one of Nick's big singles from the album, Rhiannon, as one of the top 500 best songs of all time. Landslide was another big track from the pioneering album that did well. Unfortunately, as a result of Fleetwood Mac's popularity, tensions between the two escalated and they eventually split up. Stevie Nicks decided to pursue a solo career in the late 1970s, and her debut solo album, Belladonna, was released in 1981. This song was a smash hit, topping the Billboard charts. Mirage 1982 and The Wild Heart 1983 were two more solo albums that followed. Pop singer, she's a real trained. She's a musician. Yes. Musician so type, yeah. she, you know, she came back early and really mm -hmm. spent a lot of time with the guys, really just playing. Stevie Nicks has been a successful rock star in her career and earned a lot of money. Stevie Nicks has a net worth of sixty-three million dollars. Stevie Nicks owns a house in Los Angeles, California. Stevie Nicks owns a Mercedes. A Ferrari 599 GTB Fiorano. A Porsche 911. An Audi R8. A Mercedes-Benz SL55 AMG.